Hi all, I have another interesting engine game to show you, a very high level one, Stockfish 11 versus Leela ID 62329. The battleground of the opening given to explore is the modern defence. And if you want to check out an interesting new course at Chessable, Kings Russia TV slash Modern Defence has a lot of variations explained and ideas. In this game, we see after E4, G6, this is the modern defence, the quick fianchetto, Knight F3, we actually see here D6, Bishop C4, this is known as the Mad Dog variation, looking at F7. Uh, so Knight F6, Queen E2, both sides castle, Bishop G4, this is the end of the book. So we've already seen one example game in this. So here, Black is volunteering that Knight Square Bishop. C3, potentially, if it's kicked, uh, but reinforcing D4 now. Knight bd7, h3, and indeed, yes, taking. Not too many choices there. Queen takes e5. We have bishop e3, rook e8. The bishop drops back to b3. a5, d5. Now, this is a, a kind of position where you would like generally to play against uh, engine opponents if you're a human because it's kind of closed, more strategical, and it looks like you can do a sort of kingside pawnstorm later. White does have this bishop pair, though, but in general, it's uh, an interesting idea to try and upgrade versions of the King's Engine Defense. If you're a King's Engine Defense player, the modern defense is a great way of transposing into, into those sort of positions like it has been here. We see rook f8, rook d1, king h8, which vacates g8, uh, which means sometimes knight g8 and bishop h6 is an interesting strategic idea to exchange off these dark square bishops. If this bishop can be left on the board, it's it's uh, not going to be that effective by itself quite often. Bishop g5, h6. So Stockfish is making Leela use the h6 square for a pawn. Now knight g8, but still there's the potential for f5. And in fact, up to queen e2, f5. We don't see f3 in this particular game. Uh, in fact, we see e takes f5, g takes. So it's interesting because this g file looks extremely dangerous, potentially. It's, it is an open road against the king. That there's no traffic on it yet doesn't mean it's not potentially dangerous. But white's idea is to slice open some squares around black's king and use this light square bishop now, bishop c2. So how dangerous is this? But factor in that black seems to have f4, f3 as a sort of battering ram against the white king. So that hasn't been stopped here as a possibility. But technical note, white is potentially after f4, uh, going to play queen d3 looking at queen h7 chat mating. Nevertheless, Leela plays f4, we see bishop c1. And now queen h4 is played. So here, if f3, queen e4, crudely threatening checkmate, actually forces black to interrupt the protection of the f-pawn. It's a neat tactical idea, actually. Uh, but here, even stronger might be, instead of queen takes, uh, queen h4, looking at h6. And these bishops are really quite nasty against the black king. If f takes g2, bishop takes h6, this is all going uh, pear-shaped with bishop e6 coming in that's not what you want to do so it seems the battering ram although tempting is not wise here queen h4 actually extinguishes queen h5 so blacks it's kind of a, a king safety move in a way leaning over the king side not just to attack but also control that key square there okay so we have actually knight a3 it looks as though c7 is sensitive with a5 that b5 score is it's difficult you know, to play a6 now if pawns don't go backwards. With pressure on c7, isn't that tying up resources? So is this a very, very difficult position or not to play with the black pieces? We see knight g f6. If the battering ram move f3 is played here, after queen d3, knight d f6 here, indeed white can play queen takes f3. Neat little tactic. So that battering ram disappears without too much compensation. So we have uh, knight g f6, protecting h7. We have now knight b5. So very interesting situation. What would you play here? Would you defend the pawn? Or would you play something else? 
if I give you five seconds black to play here I feel it's pretty instructive from this moment on especially so black to play okay I think there's some faith in the battering ram we have e4 so wanting to give up c7 to try and get this kind of move in f3 if black had played instead rook ac8 that's pretty passive tying up resources bishop f5 for example this position uh, is going to be not too bad actually for either side there's, there's a very very tactical weird line i'm about to show you here which shows the ferocity tactically of black's position now this this is crazy stuff but it could end up with a perpetual check that's just a crazy uh long engine line <laughs> so but anyway rook ac8 is not maybe not totally losing from a technical perspective but e4 was played and that looks like a lovely battery is still on the cards now battering ram effect so queen f1 uh, so uh, here if bishop takes e4 then the pin is looking nasty and in fact after knight takes we get the move f3 in here and this queen takes and f takes g this is crushing this is really crushing stuff you can see that uh, this is not a good idea at all <laughs> for white what end up losing a ton of material so queen f1 was played now knight h5 so what is going on here naughty stuff probably there's two pawns hanging but there's this battering ram lurking over the white king black seems to be playing you know more intuitively black it's it's evident that black is not caring about these two pawns because the king is the uh, ultimate prize in the, in the game of chess and we've got the g file we've got a nice nice start on e5 it's wonderful attacking chess basically knight takes c7 is played if we look at the other alternative bishop takes f3 actually hits uh this bishop and if bishop takes f3 rook takes this is a really strong position as you might imagine where there's ideas now for example bishop e5 to threaten the chatmate and if black counter sacks here this is a uh, very nasty position uh, black can actually do the damage here with knight d3 knight takes f2 and then now queen g3 checkmate as an example so um taking on e4 yes allowing f3 hitting the bishop seems a bad idea so knight takes c7 and what do you do do you move the rook do you give time for knight e6 time is of the essence in this critical type of position where okay your queen side's getting mauled it seems can you actually drum up a sufficient attack so what would you play in this position if i give you five seconds to pause the video so is Lila playing like the great Mikhail Tal in this game against the mighty stockfish so black to play here okay nope you don't want to waste time here <laughs> with moving the rook in fact knight c5 is played just offering that rook protecting that center pawn knight takes another battering ram f3 is in full force uh, so some key points here black on g3 does have options like knight takes g3 and it looks really dangerous with bishop e5 to back that up if needed if black can get battery on the dark square sometimes uh, so this is a potentially dangerous form pawn now stockfish having eaten that rook retracts the knight yes to save the knight but we have rook g8 so this theoretical road to the king is being ignited being used finally knight d7 the knight just offers itself up white has gone berserk white is going berserk trying to distract uh e4 yeah the dangers are really evident here like bishop e5 and rook takes g2 it looks absolutely visually crushing so this looks like absolute desperation knight d7 already if knight c4 just to put this on the board f takes g2 battering the white king queen takes h3 will be threatening queen h1 if f4 check a strong move here is actually queen h2 yes this is very nasty if rook g1 then there's queen g3 looks like checkmate 
so uh, here if king e1 then queening <laughs> so yes it's not a good idea it seems to play knight c4 on f takes g2 it's just looking too much so knight d7 desperation knight takes bishop takes e4 further desperation it's giving giving up two pieces stop is giving up two pieces after munching that rook so two pieces against the rook scenario queen d3 the queen's come off so f takes g2 are these two pieces stronger than the rook in this particular scenario white let's look at the pawn situation one two three four one two three four five six white has two pawns though king h1 rook f8 bishop e3 knight f4 that's taken yes it's not tolerated it is for king h3 and, and d3 at this moment anyway but black has that very nice e5 square to play with uses that h5 okay let's see how the game pans out the king comes towards the center that pawn's protected king f5 bishop h6 bishop f4 so these pieces are looking great rook a8 a nice little trick is coming up of knight c4 takes hitting the knight but we see b5 so the upshot here is the white pawns are being further fragmented uh, rook b4 rook takes a5 with pressure on a2 now a4 this simplifies rook takes rook takes or rather exchanges of more pawns pardon me knight e5 rook b4 check knight g6 and now the swapping of the f4 square is about to happen the knight comes to f4 rook takes c3 so not minding uh, the exchange of rooks so we have this position where the knight and bishop can they prove themselves to be better than that rook well there's quite a lot of moves here so i'm going to go and just play this really without too much comment at the moment in theory we do know that the knight and bishop in theory in general should be better than the rook here there is these pawns are, are currently dark square targets especially this one so that's great for the dark square bishop in theory as well so let's see some shuffling around high level shuffling to get this position the knight is now ready to go into e5 looking at hitting f3 potentially but uh, yeah now coming back for a moment and here we go again <laughs> finally a commitment though of a pawn moving forward so that's definitely a dark square target at the moment and and then a pawn falls off look at this moment after king c5 a pawn is falling off it seems as though you know maybe this position the king can't really do this king g3 because this pawn's going to be really dangerous in the center so it's, it's looking as though uh, stockfish realizes that pawn's going to have to go but uh trying to get the h5 pawn but that's protected so yes a pawn up now here taking now so yes back to equal on pawns so this is really quite the technical exercise it seems actually uh, so uh, now some centralization okay knight c5 and uh, yep what's going on here bishop d6 check knight f6 blockade set up the king's better than before and uh, here there's not too many things that white can do this pawn's going forward now yep the pawn's going forward and here actually it was auto resign both sides felt um, it's actually losing now uh, for white okay the game ended here there's still some precision and tricky resources actually to factor in here uh, blacks best move one of the best moves is king d5 I'm pinning the knight uh, so for example king f4 check here knight c5 it's tricky uh, this pawn has to take priority somehow over this pawn or that pawn dropping off so here's an example where the pawn drops off and that should be it's there's a long grind left but black should be winning if we look at this again uh, after rook e1 if you fought uh, d3 that's that's not actually that's blowing things off the king f3 
d2 this is not enough white just gives up the rook and takes off that pawn and it's a draw uh, if we look at this again after king d5 um, uh, so king f4 if king f3 then knight d2 check and if there then bishop h4 check is clear enough skewing uh, the king and rook and if king f4 bishop d6 we get a fascinating position actually potentially like this where uh, the white king goes to support this pawn and there's there's another trick after knight b2 it seems as though the kings just be will just be in time for f8 but uh, black doesn't play for d3 that's just going to be a draw because of king e8 and f8 black's still winning this believe it or not uh, in this position with knight d3 uh, so that's clearly threatening knight c1 interrupting the rook from d1 so the bishop can always sack itself if king e8 so let's imagine rook d1 the thing is check and now here and if the king tries to go back the knight actually goes to here so both these pieces stop f8 whilst the king is now free for king c2 so this is a winning technique yeah it's far from simple really uh it's it's like cliff edge stuff for both the pawns in this final position uh if if you had fought earlier here instead of um knight d3 say king c2 then all white does is king e8 and is prepared to just play yeah this is a draw there as well so there's numerous draws to sort of avoid but with the best move king d5 this should be uh, technically winning for black so yeah an interesting game that imbalance you know winning the rook for the knight and bishop does triumph okay maybe it should have been categorically proven with a bit more of, of the gameplay but uh, it does seem to be absolutely winning if with precision play okay uh, there's a interesting course on the modern defense if you want to check the full-blown course is at Kings Crusher TV slash modern defense there's also a short and sweet version of that just slash modern instead of modern dash defense so check those out okay thanks very much